Hi, welcome to another edition of Azure Every Day. My name is Bob Rabaki and I'm a consultant with Pragmatic Works. And today I want to outline some considerations when deciding to build your semantic data model in Power BI or in Analysis Services Tabular. And so to frame up this conversation, I want to start by showing this reference architecture from Microsoft. And this shows a pretty typical data loading and BI pattern where we've got a data warehouse and then a data model, a semantic model built with analysis services and Power BI used for visualizations on top of that model. Now, of course, this is just a suggested architecture. You can use Power BI to do that modeling because we understand that, that you know, creating relationships and writing custom calculations in DAX is really using the same engine under the covers in Power BI that analysis services uses. And so why would you use Power BI or why would you use analysis services tabular? One thing to consider out of the gate is just the sheer size of your data. So Power BI today, uh, in the standard versions of Power BI in the cloud, you do have a limit of a one gig uh, size for each data set. Now, if you're using premium, that does increase up to 10 gigs if you're using the, the highest level premium tier. Whereas on Analysis Services Tabular, there is no hard limit on the size of your data set. Uh, this is really bound by the RAM on your server or your uh, Azure resources if you're using a VM in the cloud. Uh, and so that's something to consider here. Now, a reminder, this size limit is the compressed data size that would be stored in Power BI or in Tabular. Another consideration some organizations have is the way that security is managed uh, in Power BI and in Tabular. So generally speaking, in Power BI, the same people that are building the reports are the same people that are going to be implementing security features such as row level security. Um, now, in some organizations, that's okay. Some organizations kind of separate that, that work. In other words, a database team might do some of that security management work and treat analysis services tabular as a database. Um, and so you're, you're, you're doing some of that security work from more of a database perspective and separating that really from your, um, your report development or your visualizations. Related to that would be some additional separation of duties. The ones that I've called out here are the modeling calculations and visualization. So in Power BI, you're creating all of that functionality in, in one file. Uh, oftentimes, organizations that are maybe a little bit bigger or just have a harder separation of, of roles in the organization might have a group that's focused more on that modeling or writing the custom calculations and then maybe a different group that's consuming those calculations for the purpose of creating visualizations. So that's something to consider a little bit about roles in your organization. As far as shared development, this is a big consideration for some organizations. Uh, Power BI, you, you can uh, work in a team environment on one Power BI model. It's kind of difficult to be frank. Uh, whereas SSA is tabular, those models are built with Visual Studio. Uh, and so the idea of doing shared development in a Visual Studio environment is really quite common and it's pretty, um, well, it's common. <laughs> Uh, and so that, that's a consideration there. Another consideration would be reporting tool usage. So Power BI, if you've got a model built in Power BI, really can be consumed by either, of course, Power BI or Excel is another pretty common one. But if your organization is using other tools such as reporting services or maybe Tableau or Click or Spotfire, those tools will be able to connect to a tabular model. So if you're using those tools in your organization, you may want to consider using a tabular model. And of course, the other thing would be cost. Uh, so if I do my modeling in Power BI, there's no additional cost. I'm paying for Power BI, and that includes visualizations, modeling, data storage, et cetera. Uh, if I do want to use SSA as tabular, of course, there are some additional licensing and infrastructure considerations that you'd have to uh, factor in as well. I hope you found this overview of some considerations for choosing Power BI versus SSA as tabular model uh, for modeling helpful. Uh, if you have any questions about this or any other Power BI questions, please reach out, let us know. Thank you.